to our very episode number 76 of Game Culture Radio. I'm your host, Tyler, joined as always by our three co-hosts. And let's start with Graham. Graham, how are you doing today? Okay, I'm doing amazing. I'm back home in Newfoundland, getting fat, eating lots of Christmas food, and visiting family. Yeah. Uh, the video game side of it's kind of taken a little bit of a quiet time, which isn't bad. I brought my Switch with right. me. I brought my One, uh, one, F, one S, sorry, I would say One X. Uh, got a few games in NHL in here and there, but I've been having a great time. How have you guys been uh, spending your holidays? Having fun? Oh, pretty good. Mostly working, yeah. but having getting some time in for some games, too. Um, played, a, played a new game this week that I think Steve's going to talk about here in a second. But, uh, Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, getting over a cold, you know. Got yeah. that over Christmas. That's always fun. Uh, but I haven't had work for the last few weeks because it's been a break. So that's been nice. Must be nice. It yeah. is absolutely wonderful i second um, that it is nice <laughs> but yeah I've, I've been playing killing floor 2 yeah. uh and i've been having a blast with that game it's it's like like a couple parts left for dead a couple parts call of duty zombies and like five parts way more fun than call of duty zombies <laughs> uh i just yeah i've been having a blast so i'm hoping that we continue playing that for the rest of the year i like how it's themed so like right now it's the Christmas theme and it's got yeah. some pretty awesome like rock version. Uh, it's got a rock version of uh, Carol of the Bells, which is a great song around yeah. Christmas. And you get to kill Christmas themed zombie creature things or whatever they are. So it's been awesome. All right. Awesome. Fun. And lastly, Eugene, who uh, is going to tell us what he's been playing, but also sadly has an announcement for us. Go ahead, Eugene. Take the floor. Hey, uh, so... Oh, man, I've been tired this week. I actually, uh, I apologize for signing a little bit tired, perhaps, because uh, right before the podcast, I was actually taking a nap because I've been up since about three this morning. I was uh, had to go into work early. I've been going to work early all this week, and I have I think I caught Steve's cold. So thank you, Steve. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I, I've been playing Call of Duty. I beat Call of Duty World War II. And was thoroughly impressed with the single-player campaign and been playing a little bit of multiplayer, but not too much. But I beat that this past week, and I've been also putting a lot of time into uh, Assassin's Creed Origins still. It, it doesn't feel as if I'm getting close to the end at all. That is a very lengthy game. It is still great. Uh, combat is getting better. The story is getting better. Um, great game overall. And then... Uh, I, I also uh, put Killing Floor 2 back in, so uh, I know Steve yeah. was talking about it because it was on the one of the sales this week, so it was a great price. I know we're going to talk about it later, but uh, um, yeah, pick that up ag- again, and uh, hopefully we'll be playing it with you guys again this week. Cool. But All also, right. uh, yeah. like you said, sad news. Not, not entirely sad, though. Uh, this is my last official episode. So I've had a lot of things going on, and uh, I know that might be a shocker, a shocker to some people. But um, yeah, I've got a lot of. I'm I'm trying to focus on work, work and family first and foremost. Um, I don't think this is the last time you will hear from me. Uh, I I will uh, hopefully be be on in the future for maybe as a guest, a guest on some episodes if you guys will welcome me. Um, Of course. But yep. yeah, it's 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 nothing it's nothing uh, to do with anybody uh, else on this podcast at all. It has to do mainly with uh, I just need to focus more on family, and uh, it is very. If anybody has ever done a podcast before, it is time consuming, and yeah. it is it does take a lot of focus and energy and investment. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy uh, as it sounds. So uh, d- kudos to anybody that does podcasts, but. Um, yeah, absolutely. So it's great working with you guys on a weekly basis, almost a, uh, you know, very consistently on a weekly basis for the yep. last, I think, uh, year and three months, 15 yep. months, maybe. Yeah, but, about that. Uh, sure, yeah, buddy. It's been great. So thank you for having me. It's, uh, I, I love our fan base. I love our fans. Uh, keep on writing in and keep uh, telling people about the show. I know I, I sure will. But it's, it's good working with you guys. Cool. Hey, we're going to miss you. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to miss you. And, you know, as I said the other day, uh, you know, absolutely wish you the best. And they're, you know, like Eugene said, there are absolutely zero hard feelings here. Nothing bad happened. And, you know, we he wanted to take uh, the opportunity to come out for one more show um, to kind of end it uh, in the way that he wanted to. And whenever, you know, somebody leaves in, you know, uh, in a good way, we, we like to give them that opportunity to 
to come and do that. So, um, so Eugene, we're, we're definitely going to miss you. We'll definitely have you back as a guest. Awesome. Um, sure. You so. become my, my online brother. And uh, yeah. Great <laughs> oh, times, and I'm glad you uh, joined up and we had the opportunity to discuss video games and we played a lot of video games. And I think we kind of got you into playing NHL. So that was, yeah, that's great. You did. <laughs> so much, in fact, that like in real life, I want to like go to a, you know an actual hockey game to yes. wow. get excited that's about awesome. it. And actually, get into it. So, oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, again, sad to see you go, but uh, but it's also a good thing too if it opens the door for you to, to have more time with family and get to where you want to go. Yeah, definitely. Career wise, I understand that because we do the same thing. Um, I, I get the commitment that's necessary there too, <clears throat> um, and uh, we definitely appreciate all the work you put in here. So, yep. yeah, wish you, you and your family the best, man. Yep. Yeah. So, all right, hug, group hug over. Let's move on. Group hug. Yeah. In our top five, which is only going to be three items this week because it is the holidays, and pretty much everybody that develops games is on vacation. It's like the only time you hear they get to go. Yeah. So, we're only going to have three things this week, and Eugene, it's it's your day. You get to kick off. What's uh, what do you got? All right, so uh, big news story this week. Uh, today, uh, an article was published, uh, and it's been talked about for the last few days. But uh, the World Health the World Health Organization has will officially classify uh, video games, a video game addiction specifically, as a mental health disorder. So there has been a lot of talk in the gaming communities and uh, media communities in general about this, about how uh, the World Health Organization has really been dancing around it. Because uh, we've heard a lot of stories in the past about how um, video game addiction, uh, you know, as well as other addictions, you know, can cause uh, uh, families to break and uh you know it, it it is a it is a mental disease any kind type of addition so we shouldn't underplay it at all um but a lot of people feel as if you know this uh it, it's, it's it shouldn't be this serious so i'll give my take on it uh i think any type of addiction is serious any type of mental health disorder whether it comes to depression anxiety um, especially with any events that might be happening in the world, you know, it, it usually is linked with a mental health disorder. And I, I don't think we put enough emphasis on disorders. So absolutely, I, I can to- completely see. I don't think anybody here on this podcast maybe has an addiction to gaming. I feel like sometimes I might have an addiction to gaming. <laughs> uh, I invest a lot of money, uh, you know, in investing into my hobby. But that that's what it is. It is a hobby. And I can definitely see where it could become an addiction. I think it absolutely should be recognized. Um, so I'm glad that we're taking this step forward to recognize that it's a real thing, that video games aren't just toys anymore, that they're a way of life for some people. It's, it's, a, it's a people's uh, way that they socialize with the rest of the world, um, that it can become um, something addicting like gambling or like alcohol or like any type of drug. So it absolutely should be taken seriously. So uh, what do you guys think? Graham, what do you, what you, like you got? Me go? Yeah. Okay. Well, like Eugene said, like any kind of addiction, whether it's gambling or drinking or drugs or video games, if it's something that deteriorates like relationships over time mm-hmm. and even like health, that the people was just like they're – to the point of obsessed where, like I said, their health is deteriorating, then yeah, I think this should be looked at as a disorder because it is affecting people's lives and stuff like that. So it, it does take a while, and I know it's a gray area and it's tough Like when you like announce something that it's officially this, then you're going to have people for it and you're going to have people against it. But definitely, like this needs to be noted, and like I said, video games are really addictive. Like I've spent lots of time... And I've heard stories of how it affected people. So if there's a way that this can be like acknowledged and like, like, um, not really fixed, but like being worked on, and like they get the help they need, because now they this will leave them open to like government help and stuff like that, or like programs, so they can get some kind of a funding. And like, say if they didn't get acknowledged, like, well, you're on your own. You just figured out. So now people that are in this situation, they can find the help to get. So I think it is good because, like I said, even like Netflix, there's so much stuff. So the fact that this is like notified and like the people can use it to get help, I think is a great thing. 
Mm-hmm. I, and I agree. And I think it's a really good thing that it's being recognized. I've known people that, like, don't work, don't do anything, they sit and play games all day. And, wow. you know, and it's it's destructive in the sense that, like, they're not able to live a, a good quality life. They don't have any money. And it's, you know, it, they end up, addictive personality is addictive personality, right? And it, if you're addicted to gaming, it's probably not the only thing that you're addicted to. But if that opens the door to you getting help for that, then I think it's a good thing. Um but uh, but I but I think you know well, the WHO recognizes it as a mental disorder. I think that's a good thing. Um, the only thing I don't want to see is these idiots out there that want to go on about how it's you know gaming's terrible and it ruins lives and and you know nobody that's above the age of teen you know a teenager should be playing and things like that. I don't want to see this give them ammunition to come out and even be stronger about it. Some of them will, I'm sure. Because they take a small, tiny, tiny, tiny segment of the gaming population and assign that to the group as a whole, mm-hmm. those characteristics. And that's what I don't want to see. I have a feeling that will happen with some of these people. But uh, that's where, you know, as gamers, we have to continue to get that message out. Like Eugene said, it's no longer just a toy. It's something that adults do. It's part of life now. And, like, over 50% of the population plays games of some sort, whether it's on mobile or, or console or PC. So... Yeah, I'm and, uh, glad it's being recognized. Go ahead. Yeah, and to add on to that, you know, just to, you know, and I, I don't want to spark debate or anything, but uh, this last week, uh, one of my coworkers had heard about it, you know, saw it in the news because it has been in a lot of news outlets and was like, hey, you know, hey, Eugenia, uh, you know, when Call of Duty or, you know, when Call of Duty, because that's, you know, they, they don't know a lot about video games and they're like, you know, Call of Duty is a big game to them. Hey, when Call of Duty comes out next year, you know, you should call in. You know, you know, so now you yeah. now you're able to because <laughs> they've uh, released it. <laughs> it, it, it because of your disorder, you know, and I'm like, you know, haha, you know, so that that just shows, you know, um, you know, and the person didn't mean anything about it. You know, there's, they, it's it's known everyone that I work with and every, everyone knows I like video games. and It's a hobby that I do and I, I love them, um, you know, so they're making a joke about how, you know, I obsess over them and, you know, that's OK, but it shouldn't be taken lightly. You know, yeah. it shouldn't be taken lightly. So I'm, I'm glad that. Um, that it's, it's being recognized, that it's, it's possible to become addicted. Um, I mean, just like anything, it could be... I know people that are addicted to fishing and hunting. I'm in a big fishing and hunting state, and I've seen it to where, you know, they put fishing and hunting over their families. And it could definitely uh, become that, but um, glad it's being recognized and glad it's not being taken lightly by the World Health Organization, at least. Yeah. Steve, what do you think? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm glad they're not taking this lightly. I think addiction is an important thing that we need to like talk about, like as a culture, um, it's destructive. Uh, I don't think they're saying that, you know, everyone's addicted to video games or anyone that plays it, video games has a mental disorder. It's, I think it's specifically saying anyone who uses video games to like, I, not even necessarily cope, but just, uh, you know, they put that above like hanging out with their friends or family or working or even eating at, in some cases like that's destructive. So that's the stuff that's going to be like having this be recognized by the, the World Health Organization is a good thing for to get those types of people help because most people use it as a hobby, just like a lot of people drink recreationally or gamble you know once every you know year but there's some people that gamble every single day like that's destructive so i think in the long run this is good but i i agree with tyler this will be used by certain individuals as a reason to stigmatize video games yeah so I don't know. I, I think it's good, though. And, you know, we'll see. Well, hopefully that backlash doesn't come like we just talked about. But sadly, I think it, we'll see it a little bit. So that does for the first one. Graham, what do you got? Okay, so most people know me as the big Nintendo fan. And some people accuse me of supporting them no matter what. And they can't do any wrong. Tyler, um, and this one here will kind of help people <laughs> against me, like give them an argument. The big thing is Nintendo Switch games, you know that little cartridge, that the little tiny cartridge they say, don't put it in your mouth because it has a bitter taste. And it well, does. That little cartridge maxed out 
at 32 gigs. Now, with the size of games coming out these days, next gen, 32 gigs is not very much. Like, you, we guys we guys burn through that like nothing. So the big thing is Nintendo was planning on having 64 gigabyte Switch cartridges. So this would enable the next gen games to be able to port over to the Switch. Like, graphically, it won't be there, but, like, storage-wise, it would be there. But now it has been delayed till 2019, so we're going to be stuck with just the 32 gigabyte cards. And we know the internal memory is not that much, so now people are going to be forced to get Switch cards. So to me, I think some developers now will wait till like the bigger cartridges release before they release their AAA titles now. So they're probably going to be now leaning more towards Xbox and PlayStation. So I think this is a hit. I'm not sure why the delay occurred. Like, there is no specifics. I did a little bit of research. And, like, a f good example for this is NBA 2K18. Now, this already requires more storage than the cartridge. So now, what, are you going to be forced to use your memory now? So I think this is kind of a bad thing, but maybe they're, they have good explanation. So now we're going to be limited to 32 gigs. So I don't know. What do you, how do you guys think this is going to affect them? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. So first of all, Graham, how many Wii U's did you own? <laughs> <laughs> how many Wii U's too many or in general? How many did you own? I think I only owned two. I don't, I don't even remember anymore. It's been so long ago. <laughs> so out of the 15 sold worldwide, <laughs> you own two of them. So I rest my case. But, no, I, I agree. I mean, I, you know, I... I like I, I like Nintendo. They they've done a really good job, and they had the two best games of the year this year. So, you know, you can't deny the success they've had, and the Switch has been wildly successful. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a disservice to fans to limit games to that size when the competition. I mean, Halo Five at this point is well over a hundred gigs. Especially oh God, if you yeah, have the, yeah, especially if you have the X and you're getting that 4K update or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, you're seeing these AAA games come out on PlayStation and Xbox now that are 50, 60 gigs, and Nintendo's capped at 32 for a while. Unless you are going to, you know, download onto your, your storage, system storage. So, um, I just think that, uh, I, I think they could have included more launch. <clears throat> and it goes back to what we were saying. It was months ago we talked about this, but it did Switch launch too fast. You know, things like party chat and things like this. And the controller not working all that well out of the out of the gate. You know, you remember it would like lose mm -hmm. if it was like close to a microwave or something, it would not work well. So, yeah, I, I just wonder if it was launched a little too soon. But overall, it's been hugely successful, so it's hard to say that. Oh but yeah, I'm. That's all I. Got. I mean, this, this same week, uh, you know, they they there was an announcement that uh, uh the president of Nintendo. CEO, uh, I can't even think of his name right now, but uh, was talking about 20 million units next year is their goal projection at this time. Uh, I think that this cartridge announcement is going to hurt them in the long run. And I, I think they have a good explanation. You know, they're, they're not coming out and actually saying it, but um, cartridges are more expensive than disc. Those little yes. things, even though they're little, um, they cost more to produce. Uh, the memory costs more. It's 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 more expensive uh, to develop on those than to develop on an optical disc like the Xbox does or the PS4 does. Um, so they they need to charge more for those larger cartridges. So they're waiting for production costs to get lower. Um, and I think that's what most people are thinking. Uh, the reasoning for that is because they would have to charge more if they were to start producing those cartridges right now, and they can't do that. I mean, they're already starting to do that. Uh, we saw it, for example, with L.A. Noir. Uh, L.A. Noir was uh, um, $40 on Xbox and PS4, the remaster, and was $50 for the Switch. And it was because of the cost of the cartridge. And then plus, um, Nintendo charges more um, to develop games for their system. They charge, uh, they charge developers more to actually put uh, a game on their licensed cartridges. So that's a, another big thing, too. So the reason for it, they don't want to charge people $70 now for this uh, larger cartridge size, uh, I think, is the main reason. But like you said, Tyler, um, you know, the, the next the next gen games, the, the future games, you know, Mario Odyssey was right on the cusp 
of that 32 gigs and uh, uh, the next Mario, if we see one, this uh, switch, the switch cycle, um, it's going to be larger. It's got to be. I mean, progressively, that's how games are. They get bigger. They get graphically better. The people start, um, the developers start finessing their games to match the console better. So um, uh, it's it, they're going to get larger. They have to. And I think it's. I don't think they're going to make their twenty million uh, in, in uh, sales. Uh, units next year because uh, more people are going to lean. We're, we're going to get a PS5 announcement this next year. I think so people are going to people are people are going to uh, think less of the Switch, and this makes them think even more less of the Switch um, mm-hmm. by announcing something like this. Uh, what are your thoughts, Steve? I agree with everything that's been said. I think this hurts them. I think I, I just can you imagine if like Microsoft charged extra to put games on their console like imagine the freak out but since it's nintendo you know most we people don't care things. yeah there's that whole uh what's it called nostalgia aspect but th- i don't think it's a big deal like not having as big of a cartridges if they would have included a higher storage on the console itself bigger than what is it 32 gigs I yeah think. so but if you, the- but you have the the external i guess external but they take the sd cards so Man, those are so expensive, though. Yeah, but that's yeah, more money than a hard good. drive. They are expensive. Are it's they? Still, though, it's think... still more money you have to put in. Yeah, yeah, but the you can get a like two hundred fifty six for like eighty bucks. I thought. The yeah, last but time I looked. I, I mean, that's buy, I, I can buy one terabyte too, like... for sixty bucks. Sure, but Nintendo, the Switch is not outputting four K games. Is it even ten eighty p? I thought it like maxed at nine hundred. No, there's some games so that can perform at 1080. So it is 1080. Okay. In dock, it's 1080. Mm-hmm. In dock. Okay, so I don't know. It's just it, it hurts them. But I, I, if they would have just included more storage in the system itself, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Because but seriously, just download if, updates. If the space was storage, it'd be filled up just like my Xbox, and I'd be forced f- for an external hard drive or something like that. So I don't think like saying space because we use up that space anyways but because the cards are so expensive i think that is a a valid argument and you're forcing people to buy that card well here's my thing about uh the storage thing too i don't think it would solve everything entirely because like nba um if the games get so large where they can't fit it on the cartridge what if i don't have internet access what if i don't have good internet like yeah. the, uh, people in some countries, they only, True. you know, get one or two megabytes, you know, a second, they, it, you know, to download 30 gigs is a big deal. You know, but not see, a lot like, of people can do that. But they're trying to push us towards internet as a standard. Like even the Xbox, like they tried to push it as an online only console. Like how devastating would that be if they and, released yeah, people are, online people are only? are outraged. Yeah. But yeah, to force someone that you have to have internet in order to use this, I don't think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right. Cool. Anything else on that, gentlemen? No. Mm-mm. All right. So before we move into, or actually, we have one more news item. So real quickly, um, good <laughs> news mapping. for I know good news for uh, one of Microsoft's bigger games this past year. Uh, Cuphead passed over uh, the two million mark in sales this week. So that's pretty awesome for. You know, that is game really and good. that just released what end of September, so you know, good for them. I don't know; it's pretty straightforward. Any any thoughts or comments, guys? No, I think it's I mean, great to exciting. see an indie title get that kind of support, like two million for an indie title. So, with that success, like there's no reason for that formula to not repeat itself again. So. I think this is great news all around. There's nothing wrong with this. I'm glad. Yeah. To, I'm happy to hear it, and congratulations. Yeah. I, I think maybe it goes to show if games are good and they're original, people are going to buy them. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe this will lead to Microsoft bringing back some of Arcade. Because those that had some nice. gems on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sure did. So, in I fact, there were rumors means... that they were going to do it this year with Cuphead. Yeah. yeah. So. I hope this means Cuphead 2 for sure. We know that. I hope this means Cuphead 2. With also an easy mode attached yeah. to it. Because, man, that, that game is hard, but it is fun. It is. A it has game. an easy mode. Yeah, but, yeah. You just can't play all the levels. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah that's 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 the thing. But... It's called Getting Good. Any Dark Souls <laughs> player. Oh, my God. Get would, good. would know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. 
So that does it for uh, top five, really top three this week. And uh, before we move into questions, just real quickly, we're not going to hit uh, and dive into new releases and deals because there really aren't any new releases this week to speak of. Um, but as far as deals go, uh, all your major consoles and Steam, etc., have their holiday sale going on right now. So check that out. Uh, if you see any great deals, go on our Facebook page, Gaming Culture Radio Forums, and let us know uh, what deal you really like. Uh, for me, and I think Steve will agree with this, uh, Killing Floor 2 uh, was a twenty three ninety nine. Um, pretty good price for that game. Yes. So, yeah, I definitely recommend that. But uh, yeah, for for um, whatever console you play on, whatever system you play on, head on over into their store, and you'll see all the holiday deals going on right now through probably middle of next week. Okay. So, all right, let's head into questions from our community. Steve, what do you got? All right, so we'll go with the big one first from Dylan Anderson. It says, how do you guys plan on expanding the podcast in the future? Like, Are you talking about adding films or TV or anything else? So who wants to go first? I think you should go first, Tyler. Okay. Yeah, I agree. All right, I'll go first. Um, so, you know, this is going to sound a little similar to when we had this question last year. Um you know, we want to, we definitely want to get bigger. We want to grow our audience. Um, originally we had a goal to, you know, get to where we could attend E3 in 2018. Uh, not sure we're quite going to get there, but 2019 is the definite goal. And we got, you know, we, we took a hiatus this year, um, for various reasons. And, you know, we reevaluated some things when we came back, um, decided where we wanted to go together and, you know, really talked about, the work it was going to take to get there, you know, and, and whether or not we're willing to put in that time and, and make that commitment. So we're, we're, we're all willing to do that. And Eugene was willing to do that too, but then, you know, family reared its head in reality. Uh, and yeah. that, that just happened. But <clears throat> um, I, I would love to add in movies and TV at some point, And I think we've dabbled in that a little more recently. Uh, last episode, we talked about, movies a little bit some other stuff so you know i'd love to do that a little bit more um i i really want to get good at what we do right now first like it super good and what we do right now first and then expand out but i i, I will say i want to co- commit to expanding streaming this year i want to expand the ways that we communicate with each other in the community uh not just facebook but um find some other mediums there too and we want to look at you know, down the road, probably about halfway through the year, really looking at the website again and seeing how we want to relaunch that and incorporate that as another way to communicate as well. Um, but streaming, I think, is going to be the first thing that you guys are going to notice different and and much more consistent. And we're relying on you, though. Ultimately, we're here to do what you as our community want to do, want to see, want to hear. So we rely on you to give us that feedback and tell us what you want. If we're going to stream, what type of games do you want us to play? <clears throat> Excuse me. And what? Uh, when are the great times to do it? We, we need to know that stuff to be able to provide the great best experience for you because you guys are the ones who make this go. If nobody listened to us, we'd just be here talking to each other once a week. And that, you know, as fun as that would be, as much as I love everybody here, that's not why we do it. Uh, we, could just, <laughs> no. we could just get an Xbox yep. party chat and do that. Um, we're, we're here to, you know, provide a great experience for you and build a community together. That was our mission statement right from episode one and it still is. So we are committed to doing that. This year is going to see us arrive at episode 100, which is pretty awesome. So, and it's going to be right during E3 week, which we're really excited about. And, uh, yeah, I, th- I think, you know, we're, we're going to see it change a lot this year in good ways. And I think we're going to be, a, a different and bigger and better show a year from now than we are today so um probably not a lot of specifics there but it's hard to get into specifics when you're talking about a 12 month thing so you guys want to expand on that at all yeah i'll go i'll go next uh yeah like tyler said we're gonna get into streaming a lot more consistently and i'm if you guys want to do like a community play of a game like we all get on killing floor you can have six people playing so that could be a game that if you guys wanted to play with us you know, maybe on a Saturday night or something, we could all jump on and, you know, rotate in and out through our community and play together. But it doesn't have to be that. Whatever. It's it's up to you guys. You guys help us succeed. 
because without listeners, like Tyler said, we'd just be doing this in a Xbox Live party chat or something. So whatever you guys want to see, what games you want to see stream, let us know. Let us know what you like from the podcast. If you have any recommended changes, maybe something you don't quite like, like these are all helpful to us because we want to grow big enough to attend E3 come 2019. Graham. Well, I'm not just going to go over all the stuff what Tyler and Steven said, but Why not? I'm pretty That's much... That's great radio. <laughs> yeah. Would you guys like to hear that again? <laughs> yeah, we had great opinions. So. I'll even put it in a Newfie accent for you. No, but but yeah, no, streaming is definitely, I think, that will be our main focus and growing the community and, like I said, give us feedback, let us know, give us some ideas and... Like, if it's a great idea, we'll try it out, and maybe it would be the greatest idea I've, I've ever heard. I've heard some great ideas, though, so right. you've got some competition. <laughs> but, yeah, right. no, just definitely let us know, and we want to be more active and grow this community and spread the word and ultimately take over the world. That's my plan, okay. anyways. Yeah. Cool. So we're, we're aiming low, and that's good. So, Eugene, <laughs> any thoughts? Well, a little bit ironic, you know, uh... <laughs> talking about how we want the show to grow yeah, but yeah. We'll, we'll start by losing one person <laughs> yeah. so, um, but yeah I, I, I want to see the show grow and specifically the community and the listener base um, I, I, I've seen the show evolve I've, I've listened, listened to the, from the very beginning uh, to the most recent episodes I've seen how the show has evolved and how uh, more structured it has become um, so uh, in case you guys didn't know, we're a bunch of amateurs. We're not professional <laughs> gamers. We're not uh, professionals in news media. We're regular educators, workmen. We're we work out in you know normal jobs. We're completely normal people. Um, but I think the podcast is doing great, you know, for an amateur podcast. But I'd, I'd love to see the community grow, the fan base grow, um, more involvement with the community. Um, I, and like I said, even though I'm leaving this, like I, I won't be consistently here on a weekly basis, but you know, maybe every one month or you know, every two months pop up as a guest. You know, I'd, I'd love to see how things are going, how things have progressed. But I think we're going in a good direction, um, absolutely. So um, to keep on growing, to grow the listener base. Uh, All right, so uh, Richard Carl asks, what are your gaming resolutions? Anything backlog related or just moving forward? Okay. Gaming resolutions is to not keep buying games before I complete games. I think <laughs> if a good way to actually get kind of on top of your backlog, even though we talk about how crazy and how high the number is, is basically complete two games before you move on to another one. And then by that means you're getting closer to getting on top of it. So I Pretty think strong. being... And especially if we're streaming, just to be more consistent and like stick to it and get it done and then move on to the next one. So that is my New Year's resolution to not be overcome with the backlog and kind of chip away on it. Because there's some great titles out there that I've missed out on. So, Graham? Yes. Um, it's good it's not the New Year yet because you're going to buy Killing Floor 2. <laughs> I was afraid um, you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> we're required. But it's not New Year's yet, so it's okay. Uh, hey, for... hey, hey, huh, yeah. hey! So I want to bring up something. Sure. So last last E three, I made a promise to. I forgot what the bet was. But there was a bet, and Graham won that bet. It was, yeah, predictions. It was for predictions. Yeah, oh, it was E3 for predictions. predictions. So I, I I promised the person that had the most correct predict predictions that I would buy them a video game of your choice. So Graham, I am going to buy you Killing Floor Two. So now you absolutely have no excuse. Graham, don't take that <laughs> deal. He said sixty dollar game. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 losing money on two that. Sounds <laughs> great. Killing Floor Two sounds fantastic. <laughs> I, so I was going to say, say the I was going to say the new God of War when it comes out. Happy. But... Happy Boxing Day. No, the deal was for this year. So, yeah. you know. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll settle for Killing Floor So, too. Merry Christmas. Happy awesome. Boxing Day. With happy, all the DLC day. and the, the... That all comes band. with it. That's the he, great wants for, he wants $40 of microtransactions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. I want to be the best. And on that yeah. note, whether well, it is a note, I've got myself a classic SNES waiting for me 
nice, in Ontario. Nice. Oh yeah, because nice. that doesn't add to your backlog. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. And I'm gonna play Link to the Past. I don't care. That's the game okay. I'm gonna go play. All right. So for me, for <laughs> like gaming resolutions, um, I wish I could say that I was gonna eat into the backlog. I'm not. It's. Uh, I mean, there's some that I will. I haven't finished um, Evil Within Two yet, and I definitely am gonna do that. Um, I haven't uh, finished Wolfenstein, the new one yet. I, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, Cuphead, same thing. But when you go back to games from like before, like Quantum Break, that I didn't, didn't finish, I'm not finishing that game at this point. That's just probably not going to happen. We we all say we're going to do it, but then we go and we I'm play going the same to games do it. all the time. Damn it, Tyler. So, <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't you're going to do don't it. Tell yeah, don't tell me I'm going to do it. You're going to do it, Graham. Then you're going to get on. You're going to mess with me. You're going to say you won't play NHL. And yeah. or it's or we're gonna play Killing Floor Two. We're gonna play, you know. Well, we're probably gonna play Star Wars. I'm gonna Battle keep Front everybody up to you as the year progresses. I'm gonna yeah. tell you all the games I complete. I can tell you, you know, what we are do. gonna do. We are gonna complete Halo Four and Five, though. Graham, we get you through those. Sure. Um, but I would like sure. to get my. We will. Um, I would like to get my uh, gamer score, I guess, up to right now. I'm at 110, 110,500. I'd like to get up close to 120 by the end of the year. So, by end of 18. So, I guess that's what I'll say. Go ahead. Who's up? Uh, I'll go. Yeah, uh, I guess my big one is I try to hit six six figures on my game score. I'm at almost 80, so I have 20,000 to go. So, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, if I played some of the games in my backlog, I'd probably do it. But I just – I have way too much in the backlog to – to play that half of it's not getting played like quantum break. I'm never finishing that game, but there are other games where I just, I try, I try, I try to play. I and I just, what about the Witcher three? How's that? Oh, one come gosh. Out? Oh, God. <laughs> it's on sale this week. <laughs> you know, if I ever do it, cause I bought, I loved the game, but like 60 hours in, I just got something else came up and I wanted to play that instead. Like that's, that's a problem. So I'll put it on easy maybe and then just try to run through it. Because that's what I did for the first Wolfenstein. I just started playing that recently and been having a blast. But I put Focus that thing on, the main on, story. on super easy. Yeah. You know, could I play daddy as the developers call it? Um, and just trying to get through the story because I, I have limited time. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I, that's exactly what I did with The Witcher 3. Yeah, that I think that's what I'm going to do. So I might be able to make a dent in my backlog, but I'm not going to not buy games until I complete my backlog because then I'd just be missing out on playing games when... Because certain games you need to play when they come out because they kind of have a shelf life. Well, then you like, just got to complete games before that game comes out and then Monster you can Hunter buy Monster Hunter Worlds it. comes out in less than a month, so... <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but that's that's mine. Uh, Yeah, so I'll go... Um, I think I made the backlog uh, commitment last year, and it didn't go so well. So I failed on my New Year's resolution for last year. Uh, <laughs> but something I did do better was kind of like what you said, Steve, was um, being more disciplined when it comes to purchasing. Uh, I waited on several titles, Call of Duty being, you know, I, j I just talked about that, how I just beat it is because I just bought it. You know, I waited. I, I could have bought it day one, but I would have never mm -hmm. played it. Uh, because I was focused on other things. Um, so I, I want to continue that in how I purchase games is becoming more disciplined on when I need a purchase and when I can save money. Uh, babies are very expensive. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know that, but uh, I, uh, uh, any any dollar here or there. And uh, it definitely helped out this holiday season by waiting, you know, one month on Call of Duty. I got Call of Duty for $38. You know, so I saved twenty dollars there. Shadow Mordor I got for like twenty five. So just by waiting one month, you know, so becoming more disciplined when it comes to uh, release releases, yeah. uh, and then also too, uh, I, I want to spend more time uh, with the Switch. I think that's a good commitment for the next year. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two has come out, and I want to I want to get into that. Um, but I want to invest more time, and we're me and my girlfriend we're talking about Rocket League. And we have it for Xbox. We have it for PS4. Uh, I kind of want to get it on Switch. I have you know, for Gene. You have it? You have it for yep. Switch? So yep. I kind of want to just get it for Switch just so I can play more on the Switch. Because I do uh, a lot of, a lot more of my friends uh, at work. and uh, Plays great on the Switch. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've heard. Uh, and then, too, uh, 
you know, if you want to do a private lobby at Xbox, you can. Uh, I've heard that works out pretty well. Um, so I, I want to commit more time to the console that I spent three hundred dollars on. That actually way more than that when it comes to the pro controllers I bought and all the games <laughs> I bought. Um, I, I don't want it to become like my Wii U because with my Wii U I, I would buy every big, you know, first party title from Nintendo and then I would never get to them. Um, so I'm going to spend more time on my Switch. Hopefully uh, the new online updates coming up in the next uh, few months and uh, virtual console and the online infrastructure, hopefully all that, they fix everything that I've complained about. So that way I do want to spend more time with it. All right. So is that everyone? Yep. That's all right. So, so last question from Brian Richland asks, what should the New Year's resolutions be for Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo? Oh, that's a good uh, question. Yeah, I'll go, Maybe, I'll go first real quick. Uh, okay. Microsoft needs to... Bump up their first party offerings. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can overlap. I mean, some of them are obvious, right? I think everybody's yeah. going to say that. Um, yeah. Sony needs to just get the damn games out on the shelf <laughs> and stop talking about what's coming out in six years. And <laughs> Why? It works for them. It Could does. Read my mind. <laughs> and, uh, and Nintendo just needs to fix the little things at this point, really. Uh, they're... They probably have the ship that's most righted at this point, and they have the most momentum behind them, honestly. Um, yep. You know... We're going to see Eugene, I think, hit it on the head. We're going to see PlayStation 5 announced this year. We're going to see a look to the future from Sony. Um, Nintendo needs to fix the party chat thing, the little things like that. You know, don't make people use their phone. It's stupid. And uh, just little things like that, and that's going to put that system over the top, I think. that That's me. Who wants to go next? I'll, I'll go. go next. Oh, okay. You can go. You can go. Okay, so... Uh, same thing you said about Microsoft, Tyler, uh, first party games. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to criticize them a little bit because they did have a good e, uh, E3 uh, this year, but I didn't see a lot of those announcements get released. You know, they, they did say that a lot of them were exclusive when they weren't actually exclusive. But uh, I want to see a lot more first party titles from them and then a lot uh, more of those promises fulfilled. Uh, and then uh, PlayStation, I want them to... Uh, I want them to announce the PS5, and I don't. They don't need to make any mistakes with it because uh, right now Xbox, uh, they're doing great with the Xbox One X. Uh, you know, all the 4K updates with everything, all the free updates as they talked about, they definitely uh, uh, fulfilled on their obligation there. But uh, they've got to win. Uh, they've got to win with the PS5 announcement and do it right and make people excited for it. Uh, and then they've got to. Um, they've got to like. Like uh, you said, too, uh, they've got to release those games. So Last of Us 2, uh, Death Stranding, we've got to see some solid release dates. And hopefully they fulfill. Uh, I hope God of War doesn't get delayed. Don't need to see any delays uh, for all these uh, games that we heard was coming out in February. Spider-Man, God of War, any of those games, too. And then Nintendo, uh, they need to do a price drop. And I know they don't like doing price drops. Uh, on their systems. Uh, the Wii U stayed, stayed solid for a long time. Um, but I think for them to stay competitive in this upcoming year, I think we need to see $50 down, uh, especially with Xbox One X, the inevitable PS5. Um, I, think we need to, I think we need to see that, especially if there's going to be issues uh, with bigger game cartridges. And, and if it, hopefully their online infrastructure, like I said, whenever they announce that monthly service that uh, they fulfill all their promises to the people that uh, adopted the Switch early. So, Graham, Steve? Okay, I'll go. Okay, so for Xbox, just like Tyler and Eugene said, they need to release more first-person titles. And other than that, not a lot. Um, I'd like to see HTC Vive, well, it's probably not going to be that, but uh, some VR support maybe for the Xbox One X, just so people know if they need to invest in a PC, if they want, if someone really wants the VR experience, Microsoft should let them know that, okay, don't spend your money yet on this. It's going to be coming. It's going to be great. It's going to be the greatest thing ever because they know the best people. Um, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's what I like to see on Microsoft's side. Uh, PlayStation, basically, I don't want them to just hide behind titles releasing so far in the future just so they can win E3 or convince themselves they won E3. And I want them to realize that they 
definitely dropped the ball, not once, but twice, by not putting a 4K Blu-ray player in their machine. You guys own the rights to Blu-ray. Like, figure it out, get it right. And then lastly, Nintendo. I want to see Virtual Console. Just just let us have Virtual Console. A lot of people have been wanting this for a long time. People have their 3DSs. Maybe they'd like to pass on their 3DS someone else. Or maybe their 3DS is busted. Instead of buying another 3DS, they want Virtual Console on their Switch. So that's what I would like to see. I don't think I'm asking for too much. Please make it happen. <laughs> and last but not least, Steven. Let's, yeah. What do you got? So uh, it's beating a dead horse at this point. But yes, Microsoft needs more first-party games that are coming mm-hmm. out soon. Like 2018 needs to have multiple games for Microsoft, like exclusives, in my opinion. Or, yeah, I'm not even going to give them the opportunity to go to 2019. They need to have at least something in 2018. I think yep. Tyler's right. It's going to be Halo 6, but that needs to happen. Uh, so, because you, you made a great system, and they said they're focusing on software, so give me the software to play on my 4K mm-hmm. Xbox. Um, as far as Sony, uh, if the ps5 is announced i almost want it to be released in 2018 i don't want them to announce it and then have it not come out till at some point in 2019 especially if it's late 2019 i would maybe say don't announce it that's just me you might disagree i'd Uh, love to see it i still think we will like you don't think it'll be announced i I think it'll be announced but i think it's gonna be in 2019 really oh yeah Yeah, I don't think it'll be this year. So I I think they should actually hold off on it and just kind of ride the how many good games they have coming out next year. Mm -hmm. Um, And then for Nintendo, I would like something... Like, I know... So this year we had two great games in Mario and Zelda. So I'm curious what's coming this year because I I feel like it could be a little more bare bones. So I think Graham is right. They need to announce Virtual Console... (laughs) And this is a pipe dream, I know it. But if they added the opportunity to, like, connect my 3DS to my Switch, like, with a cable or, like, an adapter where I can put the the 3D or the 3DS games, like, in this little slot that you plug into the Switch Mm -hmm. and run games that way, that would be amazing. amazing. It won't happen. Pipe dream. (laughs) almost sure of it. But I kind of wish it would, like... But they've, always, they been, that they've always been big on adapters, though. Like for the 64 with the Game Boy Advance, or not 64, yeah. GameCube, GameCube with the, the Game Boy Advance. Yep. So that's really not out there as far as some people might think, because they have done adapters many times for different cartridges and stuff. So it could happen. Can that's I, the uh, only reason I mentioned it, because it's yeah. happened before. Yeah. Here, here's what I wish. You know, I don't, want, I don't mean to steal your Nintendo Thunder, but uh, I, I hope. And I, I think it may be coming to it. Is I think that uh, there might be a new version of yes. not a 3DS, but the oh. next iteration of DS. And I think it'll be somewhat uh, tied into the Switch. Make I think screen. maybe. Well, I, I, what I think maybe possibly is I think they might downgrade the Switch to make a portable only version to where it's not possible to be docked. It's not possible to output. Uh, it's only Can't made pull for the controllers the, off. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I think they'll make a simplified version so that like could have, kinda, yeah, kinda, and but it'll have that 3ds functionality that you're talking about. So maybe possibly, uh, I don't know, streaming, kind of like from the Wii U, you know, where they had with their ding game tab cat, tab to where uh, you can stream if you have a Switch already, stream to, uh, stream to your console, some uh, some shape or fashion. But I, I think they're gonna kind of merge the two. I think the 3DS, uh, the only the the mini portable with less graphical games. I think that might go away, and they'll focus more on mobile. But I think we'll see some kind of integration that you're talking about between the Switch and 3DS. Hmm. Yeah, but I don't want to have to buy a new system. But I did. I forgot to mention with Microsoft. Uh, I'm with Graham. I would like to see them adopt some sort of VR, because I would definitely get into that um, yeah. if I could play it on my Xbox One X. Yeah, same here. So, right. that that's mine. Cool. And that does it for questions. Alright, Steve, who uh, is our grand prize winner of our holiday giveaway? 
So our our grand prize winner is Blake Popst or Popst. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but awesome. send us a message pop, on. That's a B. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> Whatever you, we, you say, it's right. Yeah. Thank so Blake, uh, congratulations. We'll be reaching out to you this week. Yeah. On, uh, on Facebook. Congratulations. I know you're on there, and we'll set that up for you. So congratulations again, and thank you to everybody who sent in questions, and continue to do so, please, because we'll continue with our monthly giveaways. Yeah. Next month, starting in January, uh, end of every month, last episode of every month, we'll do a monthly giveaway um, yeah. for people who submit questions that are read on the show. Anything else, and, gentlemen? Well, yeah. and speaking of giveaways, uh, what we kind of hope to do with the streaming is also do some giveaways there. So yes. come watch us on Twitch, get on the ground floor, and you might, you know, if you're like one of five people, you have a great chance of winning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one yeah. in five, to be precise. <laughs> yeah, that's 20%. <laughs> Excuse me. So that's. All right. Anything else? No. Cool. All right. So a couple things before we get out of here. First of all, Eugene, again, thank you. And it's been fun. And uh, we wish you absolutely the best going forward. So, Same for you guys as well. Yeah. Yes. So you know, we will catch I will you be online back. for sure. I yep. will be back. Don't be a stranger. Like that, Please stay. Like that one movie quoted. Stuff. It's not goodbye. It's so long. Yeah. <laughs> what movie so, is that? I'm yeah, not sure. I don't know. It's probably matter. some Canadian it's some movie. Grand Goofy. Made up it's a Canadian movie. Some Triple new... A Canadian movie, you know. Some yeah. Noofy movie. Blockbuster. <laughs> so, but yeah, please uh, please stay active in the community. We, we definitely value uh, everything that you've contributed throughout the time that you've been here. So, um, definitely appreciate that. And uh, like I said, wish you all the best going forward. And then last uh, but not least, just want to say thank you to all of our, our listeners and fans out there. Um, without you, we wouldn't be doing this. And really appreciate all the time that, you know, you've put in so many questions, taking part in our Facebook group, watching the stream, do all that good stuff. Um, the commitment from you is just as important as the commitment that we make. So, uh, like I said, without you, we wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be here. And this is where I'm going to ask for your help. And it's absolutely free, but we just need your support. Please join the Facebook group if you haven't yet. Gaming Culture Radio Forums, and if you haven't gone on to Twitch or Mixer and hit that follow button, please do that. It helps support us. Um, it's Gaming Culture Radio on both, uh, all one word. So please go do that, and uh, I look forward to having a great uh, 2018 together with everybody. This mm-hmm. is our last episode of 2017, so the next time you hear us, it'll be 2018. So please, everybody, have a safe New Year. Um, have fun, yes. but be safe. Yes. And... Uh, that's going to do it, everybody, for episode number 76. Happy and, New Year, everyone. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's been, it's been a good time. New Year. No Be drinking safe. and driving. Yeah. And have we'll, lots uh, of fun. Play great games. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll be back next week with episode 77. Um, at least most of us will be back. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, if you don't hear from me uh, <laughs> before it happens, the Patriots will win the Super Bowl this year. Sorry, yeah, guys. No, oh, no, get out of here. Not on your life. So... All right. Greatest of all time, goat. You know, we were Go sad that you were leaving. And yeah, not so much anymore. This. You're making this a lot easier, you two. Yeah. Also, yeah. I don't yeah. like the Ducks. Uh, Canada rules. Woo! Specifically, New Finland. Right. Now you just fake news. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, that's it for 76, everybody. We'll be back next week with episode 77. Um, have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. See you guys.